What's up? This is August C. Jones here with another CMJ World Vlogs. Thank you for joining me and uh, I'm going to be talking about two topics today. I am going to be talking about the WWE, possibly going back to pay-per-view events, as well as I'm going to be talking about what DC, Warner Brothers, Discovery should do about Ezra Miller. All that in today's vlog. Go ahead and stay tuned. So with the whole deal with WWE being purchased by Endeavor and they're creating a whole new company and one of the things that was discussed, so Nick Khan was asked about WWE possibly adapting the pay-per-view model again where they're paying for each pay-per-view 50, 60, 70, however much they want to charge for a pay-per-view event instead of doing it like how they're doing it now where if you have a subscription to Peacock, you can go ahead and you know watch any premium live event that they have from the WrestleMania to the SummerSlam to whatever it is that WWE is doing. And it's a low price of $9.99 or whatever the price range is for Peacock. And so he said that like it's not a thing right now that uh, basically that it's a possibility that it could go that route. Because UFC is still doing it. UFC is still charging per pay-per-view event. Um, and it's not anything like that's just like abandoned that, you know, it's like, oh, they're doing old school or anything like that because AEW is doing the same stuff. Mainly because they don't really have too much of a streaming service to do it. I mean, they could do it on HBO Max, but it's all of what Warner Discovery want to do. But in regards to WWE, I feel like, and, and this is just from my you know, perception, my opinion. I feel like that would be a bad road to go down. That would be a bad decision to make. And even though if it happens, it's not going to happen like this year or next year or whatever, because I believe that the contract, the deal with uh, uh, Peacock lasts until, I think, 2026 or something like that. So it's, it's, it's quite a ways out. So we're going to be able to see every single pay-per-view event you know, on Peacock for the low price. But if they were to go, let's say we get to 2026 and whenever that deal expires between Universal and WWE, like, will they adapt the pay-per-view model again? And I feel like it would be kind of like a bad road to go down. And this is why, just for the simple fact that we've gotten used to, you know, paying $9.99 or whatever it is to watch these premium live events, these pay-per-view events. And it's been happening for so long, ever since the WWE Network was created all the way to where everything had converted to Peacock, we've gotten used to just paying this low, this low price and being able to get these pay-per-view events. And then on top of that, you got people who never bought a pay-per-view event, never bought a WWE or WWF pay-per-view event. I am one of those people. The time that I either watched the pay-per-view event, it was either long after it was over or one of my friends were ordering it. So I went over to their house and watched it. Or, you know, I just waited until like Monday and found out what happened. Or, you know, I just looked it up and it was one of those times. So you're going to get people like that, that never did that that when it comes to, yeah, do I want to pay 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars, however they want to charge for it, do I want to pay that much for a pay-per-view event, it's going to be an overwhelming no. I, that's not even desirable to me. <laughs> you know, I'm, I've gotten so used to this. And then you got people that are wrestling fans that are young that grew up in the era where all they know was the WWE Network and the pay-per-view events being on there and Peacock and the pay-per-view events being on there. That's all they know. They don't know paying $60, $70 for a pay-per-view event. Even back then, it didn't cost that much. I mean, now they've gone up with the UFC. I believe it's about $70 something, dollars, $60, $70. But it's been going up ever since then. So you can only just think that if WWE was to go that model again, that it would go up again as well. That we would probably be paying $60, $70 for a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam or Survivor Series money in the bank. And 
you're going to find a lot of people not willing to want to pay that much, especially with the way the product has been. Don't get me wrong, like the pay-per-view events have been better than the actual shows, but in the same sense, I don't think it's going to be too many people that's going to do it. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still going to be a lot of people that's going to buy the pay-per-view events, but you're going to find a lot of people that's going to either go to Hooters or a bar and they pay for it and they just watch it there. Or they're going to have one person order it and then they're going to go over to their friend's house. Or they just want to skip out on it uh, like overall. You know, unless your job requires you to watch it or you really, really want to watch it and you got the funds, you're not going to find too many people like going out of their way and purchasing a $60, $70 per view event, especially coming off of a Peacock deal and even like their own network where we only pay $9.99 to have all this content on top of that watching the premium live events as they call them <laughs> you know and it's just, I feel like it's a bad thing bad road to go down I feel like I, I really think that they should just keep it the way it is whatever deal that they're going to have just keep it to where you're playing this flat because I don't think that it's going to really amount to anything by them literally changing it Especially after people that got so used to it now. It would be a dangerous road to go down, which I don't know if they're prepared for that loss. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, and I'm not saying that like they're going to have a huge loss, you know, when they first start doing it. If it first starts doing it. Like they're not going to get too many people that, you know, going to buy it. Because they're going to be people that buy it. But I just don't know how successful it's going to be going from that to something else that's more affordable for people to going back to that where it's costly and then it, when people not being really satisfied with the pay-per-view events it's going to really show because people are going to show how much they care about something through their wallets because if they're not satisfied with the product leading up to a pay-per-view event they're not going to spend their money on that pay-per-view event they're just going to skip out on it unless they hear that it was actually a really good show then they might get it afterwards but other than that, they're not going to just spend their hard-earned money on something like that. So that's why I feel like it's a bad thing for them to do, to go back to doing. They don't want to go backwards. They want to go forwards. And if they want to do something like that, at least create their own streaming service. Which I think it would be kind of like... It, it would be weird to transfer everything onto the WWE Network. They have to transfer everything off of there to put it on Peacock. They have to transfer everything off Peacock to go on the new streaming service. It would be kind of weird. But at the end of the day, um, if they're going to do whatever they want to do. Whatever they feel is profitable, they're going to do it that way. But whatever they decide to do, hopefully they just keep it the same. Let's put it like that. Because I'm not about to pay even $50 for no WWE pay-per-view event. I'll just wait to see what happens on Raw or I'll listen to Solo Monster or the Don Tony and just like, hey, see what happens. But other than that, those are my thoughts on that. Yo, yo, since you've made it this far in the video, you might as well go ahead and give it a like and subscribe because apparently you like what I'm seeing and how I'm talking or how I'm looking. You're attracted in some type of way. Maybe it's weird, maybe it's not, but hey, I mean, if you're feeling some type of way, go on here, subscribe, and all that stuff, and let's go to the next subject. Let's... And so, knocking down another door, let's get into this whole Ezra Miller thing with DC. And I'm going to try not to talk too long on this because I have a lot to say, but I'm going to try and make it as short as I possibly can to make this whole vlog not extra, extra long. But... Everybody knows the whole thing with Ezra Miller, all the stuff that he was into, everything that he's did. If you don't know really what was going on with him or who Ezra Miller is, just look him up. He's a guy that plays Flash and he's then did a lot of crazy things. And so, as of right now, there's no word on whether he's going to stay on board or not. I'm keeping hope that they get rid of Ezra. They get rid of him. And this is the reason why I say I hope that they do. I don't like to wish that somebody loses their job, their livelihood, but in certain circumstances, you know, you kind of have to look at things differently. Everything that he's done, he's harmed people, threatened people, 
and done some like just crazy things it's like you can like yeah they might need to get rid of him yeah we might need to like cut ties you would think that that would be the thing and since the old regime at Warner Brothers didn't do anything to reprimand what he was doing they just kept him on swept it under the rug hope that nobody notices or but the rug was just slowly getting bigger with all this dust and all this debris getting swept under it that after a while you gotta deal with it and so my thing is is that i feel like when everything is said and done they should get rid of them now i can understand them not trying to go that route right away like right now just because you don't want it to be where flash movie is coming out and then now yeah he's not gonna be flash anymore like you know and have all this controversy going around the main character of the flash movie and you're finding yourself having to deal with that they're having to deal with promoting this movie and, and it's it just it's too much to just try to keep contained so what i think that they're doing is that they're waiting out not to see what the flash is doing but waiting until the flash comes out and then maybe a week or two after that they'll announce that ezra miller is not going to come back as the flash we we decided to cut uh ties and we hope that he gets the help that he needs and i feel like they're going that route i feel like that is possibly the best route just any route that contains him not being the flash or continuing on is the best form of action like i would have been got rid of him but I understand maybe there's a method to their madness of why they're keeping them on and everything else. And that's probably the reason. And the reason why I say get rid of them, whether or not this movie pulls over $40 billion at the box office or not, for one, not only because of the stuff that he's done, you just don't keep a person employed that's done them things and constantly keep employing them and keep rewarding them for them doing bad things. But the real reason why I say that is because it's going to set a principle. Whether you fire him or you don't, it's going to set a principle for future talent, for future actors. Because all they would have to do is look back if they have a scandal uh, like a Jonathan Majors, which I may end up making a video about that. But let's, let's say they do something like Jonathan Majors. They're accused of doing something that they may or may not done and waiting on the evidence. And let's say they end up getting fired then they can look back as like, why y'all firing me? Ezra Miller did all that stuff and y'all kept him on. He's still playing Flash. He's in the next Justice League or the Superman movie and he did all this stuff. He's harmed people, sent people to the hospital. He's been kidnapped or groomed like a little girl. You know, he's been done these things and y'all still kept him on. Why? For whatever reason but i do something where i'm accused of and y'all get rid of me so it's going to be a whole big issue with setting the precedence of what you're going to do with your company are you going to be the company that sits there and look at it like this isn't tolerated like we're not going to stand for this and then you know if you're going to do this we don't want to do we don't want to deal with you or you're going to be like oh well, you know it's good like you didn't kill anybody so you know, it's, it's nothing, you know, that we're going to, like, fire you over. So, go ahead and just go back to work. You know, you got to think about it. You know, you got to think if somebody was working at any other job and they did these type of things. Like, will they still be employed? And I feel like when it comes to Ezra, they definitely need to get rid of him. So, it, it's going to be a big problem that they literally trying to restructure and restart. I mean, renaming HBO Max to Max isn't the best start, but... In any case, they're trying to restructure and do things differently and just do things better than the old regime did. And it's like, I feel like that's one thing that they definitely need to address. Uh, if it's not soon, it should be sometime not long after the Flash movie uh, releases. It should be addressed and handled in a way that literally makes sense. Because keeping them on makes no sense because... To a lesser degree, you're going to think about, like, why are you keeping Ezra Miller on, who's done all this stuff, but you've gone the different route with uh, Henry Cavill as Superman. A guy who is controversy-free, who is not doing anything or has done any, hasn't done anything that will put his name in the headlines in a negative light 
but yet you keep a guy who has done all these crazy things on board. Like it just doesn't make any sense. So it, it, it's like it, it, they need to set a principle. They if they're doing making all these changes, canceling movies and shows and doing all this stuff to kind of restructure and make sense of everything that the old regime had in play. That's one thing that will make sense is firing Ezra Miller, getting rid of him and bringing another actor to come in and play Flash. Someone who has a more spotless career that they don't have to worry about. So that those, those are just my thoughts. Um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's fucked up that they have to go through this stuff, that any company will have to go through these things, but it's all in how you deal with it. And I feel like, and I have faith that they will do the right thing. If they don't, then it's going to say a lot about Warner Brothers and Discovery. It's going to say a lot about it. And I just, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful if he stays on, like, what's that's going to say about the future of Warner Discovery? Just my thoughts. But in any case, that will do it for this episode of CMJ World Vlogs. I hope you guys liked it because if you got to this point, obviously you liked it. So go ahead, give it a like, subscribe if you're not, hit that notification bell for more videos like this. And I will catch you guys on the next one. So peace out, stay safe, and check out some other videos.